Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lung Pamai and in this video, I'll be showing you in detail how to design a task pane user interface for data input. In the process, you'll also learn how to use various controls from both UI and UX perspectives, like adding a watermark on a text box, adding hover effect, creating a dependent drop-down list, or pre-filling controls based on user selection. Um, we'll also explore various other functions and methods, so stay tuned and do not skip forward. And if you have any questions, please comment below. Before we begin, if you haven't, please do not forget to subscribe for latest updates and to support my channel. Also, do not forget to leave a like and a comment if you want me to make more of these videos. Before we begin, let's take a quick recap of what we've learned so far. I'm gonna fire this up. Control F5. So it's launching, build succeeded, launching of the application. So here you can see we've added this notification in system tray. And then once you go inside the tray, you'll also see a context menu we've added. Uh, which can trigger a code of your choice and then these are the dummy data we've added this ribbon called demo and then we've learned how to write to cells refer to sheets workbook uh, we've learned how to filter on and then export the data to um, external folder for example that is also something we've learned we're going to continue to use this, this data um, and then uh, we'll add you know like uh, tasking to this project but the idea is same so if you have any other projects you're working on you can add it to those projects as well um, in similar manner now we'll right click on the project click on add and then you can also use the user control but you click on components so that you can see the entire list now we are going to use action pane control we'll talk more about windows forms and other controls here uh, at a later stage so select this control you can leave the name as it is or you can rename it uh, in a way you want just leave the dot vb part and then click on add okay so this is the object it's added i'm gonna bring up the toolbox so anytime you don't see any of these windows uh you can directly search here as well you can write toolbox for example and then once you uh, from the result you click on it and then it's gonna bring up this window okay like this as well now I'm gonna pin this because we're gonna use this and then from here I'm gonna just drag the button you can also search for the controls if you don't see them like this uh, okay so this button control is still being selected uh, after you drag the object if you you know like it's not gonna go away so you just hit escape and then it's gonna bring your cursor back to pointer like this okay now from here I'm gonna press F4 this is the project window which is being pinned down here I'm gonna bring it here for now because we'll be using this more let's call this um, test one and then double click to go to the code pane Now let's just add a message box alert. Let's say hello world. Okay. Now as such, this is not going to show by itself. We have to um, refer to this and we have to load it up. So for that demonstration, let's go back here to our ribbon designer. Let's add a new group. You can add it here as well, but uh, so that we have a uh, different group for this okay let's add the label as task pane project Something like this and let's add a button let's call this button as show task pane double click to go here i'm gonna get rid of this properties window for now So from the top here, we'll declare our new object. Um, let's call this private. Let's call this object as task pane. I think that should be enough. That new, and then let's call this. Uh, just type in user control uh, action pane control one. Okay, action pane control one. Okay, just leave it as it is. Now I'm gonna copy this. Go back to the editor uh, to the you know like ribbon visual double click on the button now it will take you to where you can write your code now you can start 
um, from here, from Globals, we'll access this workbook and then Action Pane. So let's um, and then Controls. Now we'll add our pane, okay, the one we've added up here. Now, so that we are, you can also split this, by the way. Uh, you can go to Windows, you can add a split. Now you are able to see the, what we've declared. And if we go down here, and drag this down here. By the way, I'm not sure you are able to see it properly. Let me make it to 90%. You can also switch to a full screen if you want by uh, shift alt enter to make the you know like bigger like this and then from here so now we've added this um, control then we can further dot application and then we can first display the document action control this one set this property to true okay and then now we can start referring to this dot show. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch back from full screen. You can click here, or you can do Shift Alt Enter. Go back to this window. Okay, now I'm gonna launch this Control F5. So it's loading up. Here you can see the status. Uh, let's fire up the notification. And then once you go to demo, click on show task pane. So here is our task pane. You can resize it like this as well, like this. Now we'll talk about other controls as well in the near future. Now once you click on task, uh, test one, so it says hello world. This is the name of the app. Uh, you can drag out and leave it wherever you want. I mean, you can pin it to the top. Uh, to this side as well like this okay I'm gonna leave it here like that I'm gonna exit go back now I'm gonna remove this split uh, let's add the same thing um, as the workbook fires up okay I'm gonna copy the same code and let's go to this workbook and then you can go to view code so this is this workbook class and then the startup is going to fire up as soon as the app opens you can see this is the notification that we've added here now let's also add this here so that as soon as the you know like the application opens we want let's say that we want to show this task pane automatically so the user doesn't have to trigger it okay now loading this up again i've not changed anything i've just declared this in this workbook class and then when you see this class uh, just think of this as an object control f5 so we're expecting this to show up automatically here okay now test and hello world okay now i'm going to close this Okay, for the next part of the video, in order to save us some time, I have put these uh, rough visuals as well as I made some small changes to our data set. For example, the cells that you see here in blue are new fields that I've added to client's table. Here is the, I've inserted a new field, gender, and then these are additional fields. And um, here, if you go to list, you'll see I've prepped some data so that we can add this to drop downs. Later and you know like uh, the reason for these three fields is so that we can create like an auto fill as well as to create dependent drop down list okay now if you look here um, I try to include many controls the reason for adding these fields are done so here gender will be option button best way to con to be contacted will be either by phone or or an um, email yeah, so this will be checkbox, this will be the date control, and then this will be drop down, uh, text box, and so on. So I've put in here, and then the client ID can be autofill, okay? Let me take a quick snippet of this so that we can toggle and see. Okay, now I'm going to close the application. Okay, now let's start adding controls. I'm going to get rid of this. 
Uh, first, I'm gonna bring in the panel. This is mainly for the menu. Okay, uh, press F4 to bring in the properties. Now look for dock and let's dock this to the top like this. Okay, for now, let's um, put a background color um, of blue. something like this is for now and then let's bring in some labels so first um, let's call this as add new client let's bring it up here like this now the size can be around 20 okay that's too big maybe 14 and then let's make the four color white like this i'm gonna replicate this let's say that we want to add um to menu let's change this to um, search or something and then for now I'll just put a separator as well like this So when the user clicks on this, we can bring in uh, different tabs, like that. Now let's add a tab as well. So we'll add two pages and then we'll add controls to one of the pages. let's see so far how it is okay so here is our panel cool now let me make this sorter Now let's link this um, menu to this um, tab. So first it's gonna be me dot tab control dot select the tab index equal to zero and we'll replicate this for uh, search. This will go to the second tab so the index starts from one. I'm gonna put a comment here. Okay, now let's see if it works. Okay, now we can change uh, some properties of this. We can change it manually as well, but uh, let's do this on load. Let's call this with me dot tab control and then here you can specify let's take care of the appearance uh, we can set the appearance to flat button and then um, item size will be new um, drawing size let's set this to um, minimum and then size mode so this is uh, you'll just see it now tab uh, size mode and then let's set it to fix like this okay let's see so this is basically to hide those tabs like this okay so once you click here it goes to another tab like this 
Now we'll write a small function to include a hover effect, uh, to add a hover effect to these two custom menu we've created. Uh, so when the cursor is on top, then we'll change the font color to yellow. And we can even underline it, and then when it exits, we will change back the font color to white. Okay, now I'm going back to this. We'll add a function, let's say set, um, set over effect, something like this. And then uh, for now, we'll just add boolean. We'll take two things. Um, one is the name of the control. Let's call this as um, v control name as string. And then um, this can be uh, color type or something like this as string. We can even directly pass the color, but for now, let's keep it simple. Now you can, like in VBA, you can directly set it to true or you can specify return true or false based on your requirement, something like this. Um, now let's declare, um, let's call this my control as a label. For now, we are just going to work with label. And then there are different ways, but uh, we'll try to use this method called find. And then this is where we'll specify the name. And then we will search all the children, we'll set that true, and then whatever it finds first, okay? For example, you can directly for color dot is equal to color. Okay, so first let's import drawing. Uh, System dot drawing. And then now it should be good. Dot four colors called the color dot white, and the other one is gonna be yellow. You can also specify RGB color, and there are ways to do that. Now, for example, if this is yellow, or I mean, say W, then we will change this to white. Similarly. When the value passed here is Y, let's change it to yellow, okay? Now let's try to assign this to this controls events. Uh, let's look for mouse over. And mouse leave. Let's add it to this too, okay? Now this is very similar to what we've done in UI and UX, so let's call this function. So when it, this leaves, we want to say set the font to white, and this is going to be the name of the control. So when it's on top of it, we want to set it to yellow. Let's first see if this works before we set it to another control. Okay, so as you hover your mouse upon it, you can see the color of change. Now let's quickly add this for label 2 as well. So mouse leave and then mouse hover, okay. So now when it is on top, we want to set a yellow color. And then when it leaves, we want to change it to white. Now changing the name of the control, saving it, and reopening it. Okay. Now let's start incorporating this, um, bringing back this toolbox. And properties. Let's get rid of this. Let's leave this as a placeholder for now. Okay, thanks. Okay, this is where we're gonna design this. So uh, first will be a label. 
and this is going to be called from the text let's change this to a gender and then let's bring in radio buttons skip now let's change the text to we'll just add male and female for this video okay so you can use your uh, arrow keys to move around as well and then let's bring in text box make a copy of this this is going to be the first name and last name like this and again a text box we'll rename the controls in a bit and then it's going to be the address I'm going to keep this separate now let's look for combo box for the drop down so first is the state city and yeah that's going to be all for I'll just copy and paste here so that the size is exactly the same. Now this one is for the postcode. So we are done with this. And then two more text box. This is for contact information so I'll just leave it down there. And then email address can be longer like this and then best way to contact let's put this label here best way to be contacted and then let's bring in check boxes Let's change this to by email. And then phone. Now we'll have to resize it a little bit. It's getting smaller. Now we can bring in the date control as well, uh, date and time picker, and let's leave this, as we'll realign it. Let's change the format to short, um, okay let's keep it short for now. Let's change the text to go live date, something like this. And then we'll add a button. So you can also search and when it is in focus, for example, this is in focus. If you hit enter, it's going to automatically add it. That's what happened right now. And then let's call this as submit. Okay. We can also add in this fashion. It's up to you how you want to arrange your interface. Let's try loading it. Okay, so it's not too bad. Now we can change the background color and keep this front and the back color as well same. Now we'll add a watermark, uh, we'll uh, pre-fill information, we'll you know, add elements to these drop down items.
Now these two can be closer and then this will be the submit button. So for now we'll just leave it as it is. Let's start loading data from here. Now since we already have added all this, we don't need this now. Let's take this snippet. Okay, um, so now when you have to uh, make changes to this workbook, making it directly here is uh, not easy. For example, if I click on this, it takes a while to preview it and then it's quite slow. So what we can do now is, um, what you can do is go here to Windows and then you can close uh, the documents, okay? Or you can also directly find the tab from here and then you can close it like this. That will close the workbook. That way when you go to your, when you click on your solution or project, it will, you, you can, you know, like navigate to that part. And then you should be able to open the file directly from here. So if you do not close it from the project, this will be locked and then you'll only have read-only access, okay? Now what we can do more is uh, we can add one more list here. This will be like to add a placeholder or watermark in those controls. For example, let's say this is a uh, control name. By the way, you can you know like set all this up in database and then you can pull all these uh, settings or you can load it from the project itself. Uh, there are various ways to do it, but since um, most of you will be coming from VBA background, I'm covering it lots of these examples from VBA perspectives so that you are able to follow easily, okay? And then very soon we'll cover more complex or newer topics. Now let's call this, uh, for example, in text box one, let's say that we want to prefill it with first name like that. So that's the idea. This is something we will take care of it. Uh, let me quickly set this up. We can also directly change the... Um, we can assign a value here itself, like first name, like this. But instead of doing that, let's dynamically load this up from the backend. Now let's start changing the name so that we can easily refer to it. Now this is going to be the first name. Uh, this is going to be last name. So first name, last name. Now I'm going to quickly do it for the rest of them. It's going to be company. Now I'm going to prefix CB so that we know this is combo box. And then this is going to be CB CD like this. This is going to be postcode. phone one and the next one let's set it to phone two and this is gonna be email This is gonna be checkbox and let's call this 
email and this by phone. Okay, and let's call this submit. So when you properly rename uh, name all these controls, it's easy. For this, we don't need to have. Um, I'll just leave it here as a placeholder. We don't need to assign a default placeholder for this. So I'm gonna get rid of all these items which are not required. So first name, last name, uh, company name, address, state, city, po uh, postcode, uh, phone one, two. We can also put, um, let's call this contact info. Sorry, this, I'm looking for text actually. Okay. Now let's fill all this and then we are ready to add a watermark. We can also specify optional, something like that. And then email address so these are going to be you know like for watermark like a placeholder value okay now this will be loaded to this uh, state and then to the city and then this is going to be for lookup now let's give it a shot coming back here f7 Now when this control loads up, let's um, automatically fill the all these controls with watermark. Uh, or we can also write a new function. Let's make a copy of this. Let's call this um, set default. So adding the drop down and everything can be controlled from here. Now let's get rid of this. We'll reuse some part of this. Now we want to loop through from this range. Now let's uh, as uh, Excel dot uh, worksheet, and then globals. By the way, we can also add a sort card and everything. We'll talk about that in a different topic. Global is this workbook dot um, application and then from here we'll access worksheets. Let's refer to this list tab. And then dim um, this range as Excel dot range. from H5 till 14. Okay, we can also make this dynamic for now. Let's keep it like this. And then we can also declare um, Okay, and then we'll look through this range. And here we can specify our control.
now the name these are name of the controls okay we are looping through the name of the controls here uh, this will be your range value and then we can say dot text equal to range sorry dot offset same row zero and then one column this value are the ones that we want to fill it so dot value and we can also take care of the four color we don't want it to be black rather let's say color dot gray like this okay Thing that should do for now we can link this to the load let's see if this is works now I'm gonna save this and close okay it's very up. So you can see first name, last name, all these are being filled from here, company name, address, state, city, postcode, phone one and two, optional. Now this contact, this has to be transparent, the background, and then the email address. These are the checkbox. You can also specify it here, one or two, and then based on that you can also do it. But for now, let's leave that part. Okay, so it's not too bad. Okay, I'm gonna close it now. Now let's add item to these two combo box. Um, let's go to the same code. Unload, maybe, um, maybe we should add it here. With me dot state, combo state, yep. And let's first clear it. items and then let's clear it and then let's loop from uh, 5 b5 till um, 12 okay now uh, if you want to use um, for example if you go to edit and then um, intelligence here you can also directly insert the snippet the shortcut is ctrl key ctrl x okay for example if you don't want to type it yourself you can even add your own uh, shortcuts so i just hit uh, ctrl key ctrl x and then here is for each and then for example there are loops now we can do for next like this so instead of 1 to 10 we can specify from 5 to 12 We'll talk more about this topic in coming videos. Okay, so from 5 to this, and then um, we need to, we already have the list, I mean the worksheet set up here, so um, dot add, and then this is where we can specify the value. Um, we can directly add the value of it. Cells, and then it's going to be the index and column number dot value now let's see if this works okay so the list is good now let me quickly replicate this for Now this is um, located in E and we don't know what is the last value so let's set up a dynamic value for that. Now instead of 12 let's set up um, new row, sorry the new row 
or let's say last row as long equal to now we can start dot range Okay, so going to full screen. Now this is going to be based on E column. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so city also has been added. Oops. Yeah. Now we also have to take care of this placeholder because these are actually tags which are inside this controls. So when the user clicks on it, we want this to be cleared and we want to change the font color to black. So we'll write a small function to handle that as well. Going back and let's include a new function or we can just make a copy of this function and then um, font size change, make it bigger. Let's call this a uh, placeholder. handler or something and here we can take uh, two things maybe control s control and then maybe some sort of an like an indicator that um, it is in focus or it is you know like on leaf even to take care of that now let's call this um, let's call this focus for focus indicate 1 and then for leaf indicate 2 as right this is just a variable name by the way now let's clear all this let's leave some of this we might be able to reuse it Now when the user clicks on it, we do not want to clear it all the time. For example, let's bring that back up. Uh, for example, this is the default value. So uh, when it is default value, you, we want to clear it. But uh, if this is something, you know, like the name has actually been filled like this, we don't want to clear it up, so we'll have put uh, we'll have to do a lookup uh, for the default you know value here. Let's take a quick snapshot of this for the range. Um, sorry. So, let's do it like this. Now going back, so now we'll have to do, um, first we'll need a sheet, so that is okay. And then for the range, the range is from um, from H5 till 14, H to I, okay. So this range is good. And then um, let's say dim default, or let's call this placeholder value a string equal to and here we can start uh, using uh, like a VLOOKUP function so for for that we can use globals and then this workbook dot application 
and then from here we can bring up the worksheet function and let's do a VLOOKUP to this particular um, control name dot name and then the range we want to look up from will be this and we'll look up this column I oh let's go into full screen like this okay so this is going to be our placeholder value now and now uh, let's say that uh, if if the indicated value here is 1 for example that means it's in focus so we'll write a code to take care of focus and then here if it is 2 then we'll take care of for leaving okay so this on leave this will be triggered and this will be on focus now we'll need um, some more condition so if the value inside any of these controls uh, is equal to the default or placeholder value then um, then we will want to clear this value dot text equal to and then we can say string dot empty like this and then we can change the color as well dot uh, for color is equal to color dot black okay so when the cursor is clicked on the control for example text box if the value inside that text box is a placeholder value then we want to empty that value and then we want to change the font color to black and then when the you know like uh, the user clicks away from the control um, if the value is empty we want to bring back the placeholder value and then we'll change back the font color to gray okay now let's do that now um we'll say no sense uh, put it back to gray and then this value will be set back to this now if this Now, if it is empty or equal to, you know, like the placeholder value when the user exits away from the control, we'll set back the value of the placeholder and then we'll set it to gray. Now, let's give this a shot. I'm going to get rid of this. So, I will, you know, like encourage you to type all this code because the more you play around with this, that's how you're gonna learn. Now I'm gonna set this to a couple of these text box. Now first we'll set it to focus. And then to leave. Now when it is leaving, we'll, uh, here you can see, if it is leaving, we'll set the value to 2. And then when it on focus, we'll set the value to 1. So this is for the first name. Let's see if it works. Okay, so the value just exists. And then if I type something, it, the font color is black. Now if I move away from here, okay, this doesn't work. Now when I move away from this text box, I'm expecting the first name to get filled, okay? So if there is something, then I don't want it to be wiped out. But if it is blank, then I want it to be filled back and then the color also changed back to gray. So let's go back and check the code. 
Okay, this actually has to be R. So if it is a placeholder value when it exits, or uh, if it is blank, then we want to set it back to gray and then put the value back here like this. Let's give it a try. So when I click on it, uh, now I can put in anything. And then if it is blank and I exit away from it, it brings back the placeholder value. Okay. Now we can add this to all these controls. Quickly do that. Got focus. So I think that's pretty much it. Let's try to load this up and see if it works for other controls. Okay, so it looks good. I'm gonna save all this. Now we'll include a function so that uh, when the state is selected, based on the state, uh, we'll you know like show the city instead of showing the entire city here. We'll show based on this particular combo box, and then when the city is selected, for example, it will return you know like the postcode from the database uh, from our table. Okay, so let's do that now. Um, I'm gonna double click on this combo box. And then this event is good, uh, selected index change. Now we can copy the code we've written earlier. Just give me a moment. Okay, I'm gonna copy this code. I'm going to paste this here. Now it is always easy uh, when we break down all this into different functions so that we can uh, reuse it so that it does not get very complicated, especially when you're starting. Okay. Now the list here is good. Uh, now we want to refer to this particular area. So from D5 till whatever is the last row. So let me change this. And then D5 to F. Let's do 
or just give me a moment first let's take care of um, the state uh, city combo box and then we'll take care of doing a lookup so now let's bring this up here Now the last row can be based on D. So we'll look from row number 5 till the last row. And then here. Okay, this is D column, so 1, 2, 3, 4. If this value is equal to me dot uh, CB state dot text, only then we want to add it, okay? So we want to add the city here. E column dot value. So we're looping through from five to last row, and if the value of the cell that we're looping down here is equal to this particular text, then we are adding it to combo box. So let's first try this. Now let's try to select AC. So based on AC, you can see Boston, um, Civic, and all this. And now let's try and select uh, some other state, maybe QL, maybe TA, right? Okay, from here. So you can see battery point, blue rocks, and all this. Okay, so this is working. Now we'll add an event here so that whenever the CD is selected, we'll bring a, pass, a postcode here, okay? Now I'm going to copy this here. We do not need the range, so that is out. This is what's good, okay. Now let's get that uh, VLOOKUP we've written. Control F. We can actually just reuse that. So whatever is in this uh, combo box, CD combo box, we want to look up this particular, um, so we want to look up from E to F, okay? E to F, these two. So I'm going to change this to E to F. Oops, there is... Um, Okay, so this range is dynamic now. I'm gonna get rid of this. Me dot postcode dot text. Let's call to this. 
okay so if the the value that is entered in CBC is not from selection then this is gonna get an error now we'll talk about that handler um, at a later stage for now let's keep this simpler okay so AC now for this this is 2600 civic square 2608 okay so it seems to be working now let's try for WA now if I search this here okay so it's working let me also show you a small example of how to do validation for these inputs um, so here there are uh, some controls which have a placeholder value right and then some which does not like uh, this radio buttons and then here the checkbox um, so we will do validation for this two type if the value within the cell is the default value then we'll maybe highlight the value in red when they click on submit okay so the validation will be done for these two sets of um, controls and then if it is okay then we'll submit and the data now will go to client so we are now very close now there are ways various ways again to do this maybe you can tag these um, controls and then based on those you can loop through all the controls and then um, do your validation but uh, for now um, I'm gonna you know like show you a simple way to do this so when the user clicks on this um, let's first validate okay now one small thing I've done to this submit button is I just make it bold for the font so from font I went here and then turn this to bold now let's separate this as well let's call this uh, function submit validation something like this now let's first try the easy one dim error count as wrong and then um, so first let's check this radio buttons so radio button 1 and 2 and then checkbox so ck email and ck phone okay so let's first try for this now date is going to be pre-filled so we cannot assess that based on the logic let's say that the date cannot be lesser than certain date so you can put that validation as well now going back um, let's get rid of this if this dot value check is false false then we'll just do this we'll just counter this error count now we can also directly go to exit but then uh, let's just continue checkbox email and then checkbox phone if both of them are false again then we want to this return false so in the end down here we can see if error count is greater than zero then return false else return true okay now uh, for the second set let's just give it a try for this one first okay sorry
let's see how this responds so now I'm expecting false because none of these checkbox or radio buttons are checked it's false now this will still return false now it's true so this has to be you know like something has to be checked okay now let's try for all these placeholder values our uh, controls now let me break this up so that we can visualize it better now the um Let's loop through all the controls. So if you want to loop through uh, a specific, for example, like we don't want to loop through the entire uh, controls, but we just want to loop through all the controls within this um, tab okay so me dot tab control one dot controls now we want to put a specific as well tab pages and then the first page will be zero and then the second is going to be one now here we want to check if value is a uh, default value or placeholder and then second thing we want to check if it is blank okay now for the default value we have already done a lot of work on this so we can get that where is it now or there must be done default let's just copy this now uh, maybe I'll just write under a function here function get default value for the control this will return string I'm not sure if we return a function similar to this. Okay, very good. So now from this tab, um, from this H5 till I14, um, this range is good. So I write this in, and then it's gonna do a VLOOKUP for the control. So here we'll need to have a let's call this um temp control as control or we can just have this as string and then we can do a look up to this like this uh so now i'm gonna try one thing with you um now we talk a little bit about that intelligence to go in here um, to edit sorry and then intelligence and then you can insert a snippet and then from here let's look at our handlers now try catch let's insert this and then as exception now we're gonna put this inside this okay try so basically if you're doing in VBA what we do is like we say on error go to this and then we put a handler at that particular location right for example on error go to and then you can specify error handler location and then goes here like this and then take care of that so instead of doing that let's do in this fashion so this part is gonna see if there is any uh, issues that happen and then if any error happens it's gonna be tackled from here okay 
so we can say this is equal to not not found or something like that okay so if any error happens it's gonna go here and then it's gonna return not found or not in list or something like that Otherwise, this will return this. Okay. So now we can come back here. So if the value is default or not, so we can put a validation here. If this, and then here we can this dot name is equal to me. Uh, control sorry we can put additional as well for example like um, if this is equal to default value or this dot text dot length is equal to zero if it is totally blank or you can also do like uh, length the way you we do in VBA is equal to zero or lesser than one or something like that. If that's the case, then we will set this dot or color dot uh, to red. Okay. And then we will increment the error count here. Now, if this returns as um, not in list then we don't want to do anything about it okay this will be handled uh, from another one Now we can say do nothing. Here as well, we'll just do nothing for now. We'll just leave it like that. So if this is not in the lookup range, then we don't want to tackle the validation here. But if um, you know, like uh, the value, the default value for this control is equal to the value in the text box or in the control, or if the value is blank then we want to highlight it in red and then we want to increase the counter of error which will return false down here right so let's give it a try now if i click validate so it says false and then all these are highlighted in red now if I put something here, so it's false, but these are not highlighted in red anymore now. Okay, now if you activate this, now it will turn the placeholder back to gray if the placeholder is same. Okay, so the handler seems to be working okay. So this is the way, uh, this way you can also add validation. Uh, again, it's totally up to you and then based on the requirements, some of them does not have to be filled, some has to be filled. Uh, you can highlight the, um, you know, the required ones from here as something like, something asterisk like this. It totally depends on how you want to represent your, uh, the interface. Now I think we'll do the last part. Now we'll submit this data to this table here. Uh, in a similar fashion, we're going to auto-generate the client ID and then the rest will be filled from this particular. Now for the search, we can take care of this in another video. For now, let's take care of submitting this data to the client's table. Now coming to the last part of this video, um, now let's write the value that's in this input screen to our client's table, okay? I think the easiest way would be um, just to collect all the headers and change them to variables 
and then we'll directly start writing. Client sheet. Now I'm gonna copy this and transpose it here. Now, uh, if you want to make any changes, do not make changes to this file that opens up uh, because this will be in debug folder and not in your project folder. So, for example, if you go to your project folder, this is um, the project folder here. And then if you go to bin and debug, this is where this file is opening up from. So if you uh, save something here, it's not going to uh, be saved. Okay, so don't save it. Instead, you will make changes if at all to this file in the in the app, app folder okay um, now going back here let's concatenate this with uh, like this Okay, uh, I think we can put theme this as oops so that we don't have to rewrite this then this I'll just make it string for now and then we'll make changes from there. Now the first two are option buttons, so in gender we'll have to do gender. Change it like this, this will be string. Um, now email address can be validated but uh, for the sake of time I'm gonna cover that in some other video. Uh, contact by email this also can be boolean. And then this can be date. Now all these are underlined because they are not used. Um, okay, so this will be it. I'm gonna bring this to the top. Now if this uh, submit validation is equal to false, then we want to maybe return a message box validation please ensure that all required fields are filled out and try again something like that here we can say exit sub. Now for this ones, um, let's bring all these variables to the top. Sorry. And now let's start assigning a value to all these variables. Um, here we can say so. For this customer ID, we can uh, auto-generate something. Uh, it could be client name with date or something like that. So if we want, we can also do sorry, me dot first name and me dot last name dot text. And then this can be combined with date as well. For now, I'll just leave it here. And then um, let's go to me dot uh, 
radio button dot check and then for the first name me dot first name dot value sorry dot text this is gonna be last name Keep assigning like this uh, for the post post code dot text font one dot text and then me dot font two Checkbox email dot check me dot uh, this is gonna be our date go live date dot value okay now here we can uh, put a format to this as well because it's gonna return uh, both date and time so going to the top and then we can import um, system.globalization and now we can add uh, a format to this for example dot to string and then here and here we can put in a format um, for example, uh, let's call this MMDDYY. And here we can uh, put in the provider, for example, um, culture info dot create. And here you can specify, for example, for English uh, and then for US in this fashion. Okay. Now this is because of this double codes. I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, so now we have assigned the values to all these variables. We can now add it to our uh, client's table. Let's reuse this variable. I think before we assign this variable, we should do a validation only if the validation goes well, then we want to come down here. Actually, you can move this part of the code to a module, but for now, let's uh, continue here. Now, this is going to be client table. And then um, now we can also push this all this to array and then transfer it to a module and then paste it there. Now let's keep it simple. We'll just uh, go specifically like this. Now we have assigned our worksheet and then um, From the worksheet, we will take column A as a point to determine which one is the last row. 
and here instead of row we'll dot say dot uh, offset and then we'll do one row down and column dot row okay now instead of calling this last row let's call this new row and let's try to write the value now with this dot um, cells and the row is going to be this and then one dot value is equal to x now let's see if this works So this will be exit sub. So if the validation fails here, it's going to exit sub. And then now if validation goes through, it's going to come down here. And then assign value to all these variables. And then it's going to write to, this, to the cells in client table. Um, so the first one is our customer ID. Let's write like this. Now I'm going to turn off this validation. Use the test of this function. Uh, this is not a valid. Okay, this to do with the variable will take care of it. So the conversion failed. Okay. Let's turn off all these variables as well for now. So control K, control C is the shortcut. You place your culture here, you see the shortcut there, okay? So here are the test value. So this is working. Now, take care of this part. Now, instead of this, uh, we can assign this variable a string. That's why the conversion failed. Or we can assign to string uh, at a later stage. Okay, so now let's start assigning the values to the cells. Now we have um, 15 columns. In this fashion. I'm going to add it here for reference. Now I'm going to close it without saving. So first is the client, so column 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we can directly write it using array as well. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And 15. Now for the second one is the gender. So now we can just team gender a string. And then here we can say if this is true then sorry gen equal to m else we can say for now let's keep it like that similarly for the checkbox down there
dim contact preference a string oops or for this actually we have two columns so we can just leave this okay so coming down here gender is going to be Jan and then next we have first name we could have just directly assigned this uh, this value itself last name and then company name address city state company name address city v state and then v plus code phone one and two And then go live date so for this date I think this should be okay now now let's give it a shot Okay, placeholder um, mail, first name, last name, company, address, city, state, it's returning state, okay, phone number, address, false, false, if I do this, so we go true, and 416, okay, the date is not coming accordingly, let's select. 2521 still returning us or we'll check that okay so all these are in order now gonna save this close back now first we'll take care of the date Okay, um, this could be just because of this. I'm gonna add the link uh, for reference. Please check the video description. Um, there will be lots of reading materials I'll be adding to the blog. Go like that. All right, now I'm gonna add back this validation as well, or not. Uh, let's give it a. Let's first try this date, and then if that is working, we'll turn back on and try the final submit okay so let's select 31st now it's 531st seems to be working 27th okay okay so now we can turn back our validation Now let's try to fill in the data and see how it works. So let me try with my name. 
No, I'm just gonna fill in BB8 does that. Dummy street 53 speed and as I'm gonna leave that dummy numbers. Now the email validation is very simple, so I'll let you guys um, try it. And submit so here are the information okay now let's say we move this out and submit it's gonna say please ensure all record fields are filled out and try again now you can see this is uh, not filled so we can try this now we can also try for other fields Okay, so we can say we to Z YouTube. So now you got the idea. So you can play around, add more validation. Um, okay. Okay guys, that's gonna be all for this video. I hope you found it informative. Uh, in coming videos, we'll try more um, examples from Stevens um, working with the uh, servers, database. There are so many examples I'm gonna cover. Uh, if it does help you, do not forget to leave a like. And if you haven't, you should definitely subscribe for upcoming videos and uh, to support my channel as well. And it will be great if you can share these videos with your friends as well and then help our community here grow and then we will all learn from each other. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys next week. Have a great weekend.